Coming up on Sweet and Sour, not Gary Mitchell. No, he's having a hard-earned break. But me, Glenn Hall, there'll be some spontaneous insanity as we talk about a boyfriend on the edge. A young man who's worried that, well, he's not the only person in his girlfriend's life. We'll also be talking about risky business. When does wanted attention in the office become unwanted? And finally, we'll be talking about copycat mum. Is single white female really now entering a new age? All of that and more on Sweet and Sour soon. Got a problem big or small, would a miracle be nice? Our monthly crew is back, churning out advice. You might even laugh a bit in the following half hour. Park your backside on the couch, cause baby it's time for Sweet and Sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. Pour some sugar on there, baby. It's time for Sweet and Sour. How's it going, sir? It's time for Sweet and Sour. Yeah. Good evening. Welcome to Sweet and Sour. I'm your host, Glenn Hall. Gary Mitchell is not here. He's uh, off in rehab, I mean, holidaying. And uh, my buttocks will be filling the, uh, the little divots that his buttocks normally fill in this chair. Uh, and don't be alarmed, though, just because Gary's not here. There's a fantastic panel of guests assembled here to entertain you over the next half an hour. John Conway. Hey. You've been touring the world. You're a funny guy. I have been, yes. Thank you, Glenn. Where are you off to next? Uh, Brisbane in December. Brisbane? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the plan in Brisbane? I'll be uh, headlining the uh, powerhouse uh, for Livewired, the comedy night there. It's going to be very exciting. That's a groovy venue, the powerhouse. Have yeah, it is a groovy venue, Glenn. <laughs> yeah, I know. Very all right. Groovy. I just it's made so it less groovy by calling it groovy. Well, no, it's not groovy. Yeah, it's not groovy at all. Yeah. It's very cool and hip. Yes, yeah, sorry. Like me. There's lots of bricks and, you know, metal and it's very industrial. It kind of feels like a powerhouse. Well, that's what it's called, the powerhouse. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Great. That was that. What's your show called? Oh, my new show? Yeah. Oh, the new Conway Explosion, which is uh, on on every Sunday for the next five weeks to November 27th at the Brisbane Hotel in uh, North Perth. So come check that out too. I think you should check that out. No, don't. Sorry. That's actually, no, it's actually Brisbane quite groovy. groovy. Yeah. Uh, George Gaylor, hello. Hello, Glenn. Looking gorgeous. Hi, everyone. Love the hair. Thanks very much. Hey, um, what are you doing at the moment? You've been, you know, acting it up. I've been larking about, doing things. You I are spent... a woman about town. I am a woman about town, it's true. A lady a about lady. town. A lady. What glamorous things have you done? I had a 10-hour champagne breakfast yesterday. A 10-hour champagne breakfast? Yes. That's what I'm achieving in my life at the moment. <laughs> so. Well, I think that's a pretty big achievement. Uh, it was. Ten hours of champagne. Was it just you there? All by myself. Just, just in your living room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. She didn't go out to a restaurant or anything. No. It was just a ten hour champagne breakfast. Yes. In fact, but. that's how every morning begins for George. It's true, actually. <laughs> Hi, Mum, if you're watching. <laughs> it's not true. It's not true. Claire <laughs> Monday. Hello. School teacher to the kids of the stars. That's, that's what I like to call you. Yeah. Uh, and also a uh, Shakespeare actor. Yes, yes, about to be one again, coming yes. up soon. Yes, so uh, what, what, what show are you doing? What are you in? Uh, rehearsal start on November the 21st for, uh, I'm in two of the shows in Shakespeare in the Park this two. year in Kings Park. I'm not in all three. No. I get a couple of nights off a week. That's nice. I'm in The Tempest and The Comedy of Errors. Very good. Well, yes. okay, and that's uh, Kings Park, that Shakespeare is in the Park. Kings Park, Shakespeare in the Park. Starting night. January the 6th. It's a beautiful night. Yeah. Russell Wolfe. Um, Shakespeare. No. 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 One answer, no. No. Um, and, uh, well, no, let's move on from that. Yeah. Um, Chogham, talk to us. You, you... A couple of weeks ago, I was lucky enough to be the, the Master of Ceremonies for Her Majesty the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh at the, at the Royal Aussie Barbecue. So many stories. I mean, it was, you know, Barbies are great. Yeah. And I, I mean, you know, I didn't think the Duke would turn up in the apron with the boobies on it, but, uh, but yeah. I mean, he's a fun guy. Yeah, yeah. And people don't know that. And it worked. Turns yeah. out he can slip up from time to time and say <laughs> things that most people wouldn't. I didn't see that coming. Um, of course, when he, when he recognised when meeting the head boys and head girls of schools from all around Australia and said, Oh, I see, now you've been selected for that and not because you're good looking, obviously. Which, I mean, he's a funny guy. He's a funny guy yeah. and everybody loosens up at a barbecue. I think so. All right. Well, they, didn't, uh, they didn't bring any drinks, <laughs> I'll tell you. Well, let's get loosened up here with our first letter. Dear Mitch and panel, I've just started seeing a girl. None of my friends nor any of her friends know about us yet. Mm. 
and this really makes it quite exciting for us both. The other night she invited me to a party at her place and I met her friends for the first time without any of them knowing that we're a couple. At first some of them seemed pretty cool but when she went off to get some snacks for everyone they started to really bag her out. They called her a slut and they said she was cheating on her current boyfriend and they were talking about some other bloke, not me, because the current boyfriend it seems works away on the mines. I just feel really spun out and I can't get their comments out of my head. I don't know if it's true or not. I don't want to appear insecure to her at this early stage, so I don't want to ask her about it. She might just think that I don't trust her. Should I just ignore what her friends said? I don't know if I should be saying enough is enough, or should I learn to tolerate other people's skewed perception? Warren of Vic Park. Russell, what do you say? He's very needy, isn't he? There's a lot of questions in there. I didn't, you know, I've lost track of which one I should answer first. <laughs> uh, but the fact is, Warren, I hate to say this, I think there's probably every chance uh, that your girlfriend is an idiot. Um, and, and because, well, Glenn, I love you. Yeah. And, and, and that's separate to anything, really. But, yeah. if, but if, if I invited you to a party because I wanted you to be there as my secret uh, you know, boyfriend. Yes. And to my house yeah. with my friends. <laughs> yeah. I would think, you know, there's just a chance that my friends, when I'm getting snacks for people and doing things, because I am hosting a party, uh, there's a chance that they might say, Glenn, uh, you know, Russell, sorry, have, have you met Glenn's uh, boyfriend, John? And then, you know... That referring uh, to me? Yeah. I can't yeah. the scenario. Yeah. 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 So, so you know, she's, either she's an idiot or all of her friends are lying. Yeah. Uh, but my alarm bells are ringing a little bit, I, I've got to say, Warren of Vic Park. I'd, I, I'd be thinking, you know, I would talk to her and then maybe just before she finishes her first sentence, I think I would leave her. That, that's probably Claire, it. what do you think? Well, is, I, that, is, is Russell being harsh? Uh, I, uh, I don't get why Warren and his partner have got to be secret about their relationship. I don't, I don't get that. That's I don't exciting. understand why that adds excitement. I think at the, if you're at the start of a relationship and you want to keep it secret, I don't think you're proud of each other. And quite frankly, Warren, I think that you need to be truthful with each other. And maybe you don't need to tell her that everyone called her a slut when no. she went to the kitchen while you were picking up some peanuts. But I do think that you need to get out in the open. Maybe he's already picked up the peanut. Warren George, what do you think? No truth. Don't. Don't admit that you, oh. you don't think truth is well, the Well, no, it's just like Russell said, Warren does sound like a bit of a needy fellow. Um, what he needs to do is just go with it and, you know, see how he feels intuitively. And also do things like if she leaves her phone lying around, go through all her messages. Hack into her Facebook. That's terrible Read advice. her email. John, John, <laughs> would you, is this, is this what you want? No, I'm, I'm, quite, I'm quite peeved with Warren. Uh, first off, you know, get, you're a bit of a wuss, get a spine, dickhead. Because what I would have done in that situation, yeah. as soon as they started bagging out my girlfriend, secret or not, I would have said, whoa, 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 girlfriend's off the hook, stop bagging her out, you're a guest of the party, you're a guest of the party, man, she's off to get you some snacks, they could have been really delicious, I'm sure they were. <laughs> Warren sounds, I reckon they would have been, Warren sounds like, <laughs> Warren sounds like he knows his snacks. I can tell from his writing, he probably likes pizza pockets, great. One minute to microwave. Two minutes to stand, <laughs> you got yourself a delicious snack. Great Just throw Mike Wive in there. So, one of those, Russell? So, snacks over no. chicks, is that, is that what we're saying here? Oh, I'm not the, saying that. I'm no. saying get a spine, stand up for your girl. Bam. Hear what else we're going to say on Sweet and Sour after these short messages. Welcome back to Sweet and Sour with, uh, well, our fantastic panel of guests. We're having a rollicking good time. Let's get straight into the second letter, all right? Risky business. Dear panel, I am the sole female in an all-male office. Most of the time we get along pretty well. I tolerate their lattish behaviour and they tolerate me. That was until we got a new boss. This guy hasn't got a clue. He's a bit older than the rest of us and tries to act cool by making sexist jokes and flirting with me. Unfortunately, this has now filtered through to the other guys and they no longer treat me with the same respect. I'm not sure whether I'm being overly sensitive to this new abrasive boss, but I figure the joking and teasing has become bullying. 
I love my job and I used to have a good rapport with my workmates. How can I get things to return to the way they were and what should I say to my boss and the boys? This new body, boss is the only one aware that I am also an exotic dancer and he is so subtly cutting about it. Kelly from Templestow, Victoria. John, does Kelly have the problem or her new boss? Uh, no, her new boss has the problem because Kelly, what you're going to do, obviously your boss comes and has seen you perform at this place. Also, let me know where you perform. I would love to know. Add me on Facebook. Uh, mm. <laughs> so what you could do, you could blackmail him. You know, when you're on stage, take a quick snap on the iPhone. You got him out of the strip Perfect. club. Mm. Show it to the guys at work, or show it to you know, threaten to show it to his significant other. And then you tell him like, look, man, got photos of you at the old uh, black cat strip club. That could be it. And say, don't, don't mess with me again. Or this is going all over work and your wife's bedroom, which is also your bedroom, I'm assuming. Hey, what's up? Get away from me, boss. Hot coffee in the face. So you reckon a, a bit of blackmail? Yeah, blackmail is always is good. Yeah. I've blackmailed people before. Yeah, it's great. And, and when is you it, were exposed as an exotic dancer? No. no. Other reasons. And, and has it worked in the past for you, blackmail? Uh, yes, it is. It's bad for your soul, but it's good for your heart. Okay, great. Uh, George, uh, do you do anything that's bad for your soul, but good for your heart? Most of what I do could fall into that category. And actually. what do you think but about... Think... Has she, is she just upset now that, like, there's an older, less hunky guy taking a, a, an interest in her? Um, I don't know if that's upsetting her so much as the fact that this office environment is... Um, turning into, it sounds like a similar environment to her other place of employ, but she's not profiting from it. <sighs> so I think she needs to run with this. She should encourage these flirtatious interactions and, you know, really milk it and then bill her co-workers. Brilliant. Mm. That's a brilliant idea. Yeah. So get, paid, get paid in tipping dollars from now on. Mm. She could be exactly. working just about kind of 18 hours a day. She could. A day or job and a could, night job. She could combine the two and work a lot less hours yeah. and then leave herself with, you know, more time to drink, to drown the pain. So that's where the saying, don't give up your day job came from. Yeah. Quite possibly. Okay. Claire? Well, Glenn, I've got to say, I completely disagree with George because I think that Kelly, your, your second job is irrelevant. You want to be taken as a serious professional in your day job and you deserve to be taken as a professional. So the fact that you're an exotic dancer in your spare time has got nothing to do with it. You need to make an appointment with your boss, not, not like a try and have a little casual chat over a coffee. I think you actually need to make an appointment and you need to go in and you need to confront him. But you don't think, like, maybe she's got some layover just... Like, if you were, say, uh, a boxer, you know, and, and you turned up somewhere else, people would go, you're a boxer. I can tell by the way you walk, you know... Your nose. Yeah, is it, is it really... Is she doing things to make her seem like more of a stripper? At work, is she kind of no, sort of I'd behaving? Say, oh, Glenn! Like but a she doesn't imply that at all. She she said that everything was fine until the new boss came along. He just knows her secret. And she she said, thinks it's a dirty secret, and it's not. I tolerate their loutish behaviour, oh. Russell. Uh, I would say yeah. it's a dirty secret. Where have you come yeah. across uh, ladies who have tolerated loutish behaviour? Oh, really, none of your business. Yeah. But, <laughs> but it's funny. I mean, they. they uh, it's a really important issue that she talks about, but then when she says I'm an exotic dancer, I must admit, I'd forgotten just about everything that she talked about before yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I, like, I can't explain my behaviour, but it, my ears went woo like that, more or less. Right. And because I think I'm an exotic dancer, I mean, you may have seen me dance, I mean, I'm strange. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, uh, but, but I imagine that that's not the sort of exotic dance that she's, she's talking about. She, it, I would have opened with I'm an exotic dancer, Right. Hiding it down there means that she's actually got problems she's with being an exotic. Yeah. 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 So that's a that's a different issue. But True. and I'd forgotten until Claire spoke. In fact, that bullying really, because I was concentrating on the dancing. Bullying is a serious issue, and it, it is. you know, I don't yeah. know that I'd go straight to the boss with that. I think from my like, I remember being told about this. That I think the best idea is you t take lots of notes, keep a diary, write down all the instances where he's doing that and uh, then where you've tried to make improvements or you know, you've tried to uh, you know, tell him about the way that you feel and he's ignored you, keep all of that evidence because it'll come in very, very handy.
And uh, I mean, you've always got exotic dancing to fall back on. I mean, you'd think, I would imagine that would probably pay better than the job you're doing. Well, I Russell, know no, uh, no that's doing. all we've got. Save it for the next one. Mm. Of course, all of our letters receive uh, a pass to see Midnight in Paris. Thanks for sending those in. And you movie. can send your letters to letters at sweetandsour.net.au. So, uh, coming up next, copycat mums. Um, I mean, you're all famous people. Has anyone ever tried to you know, copy your behaviour in the past? I've had Rolf Harris, obviously. Yeah. That's it, you know, but, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was your idea, annoying. Stairway to Heaven, all those different versions. That's right, the, uh, the paint tin, that business, yeah. you know, the heavy breathing. <laughs> That, I did that. John, you, you're a comedian. Do you get, yes. like, groupies, weird? You yes. date some of them, don't you? I, I, thank you for bringing that. I'm Glenn. Uh, <laughs> yes, I have... Uh, I have. Uh, I do get people coming up and adding me on Facebook, which is always interesting, and people coming up after shows. And uh, I, it's nice. You know, people are always complimentary, and, hey, you know, when in Rome... <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> when indeed. Well, uh, copycat mum coming up after this with more Sweet and Sour. Mm. Tasty. I always know that I've really made it and reached the pinnacle of my career whenever I come on the panel of... <laughs> Welcome back to Sweet and Sour. We're having a great time. Let's get straight into our third letter of this evening, dear panel. I know imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, but I've had my limit. About a year ago, I became friends with a single mum whose children attend the same school as mine. We got along really well because we shared similar interests, but I'm beginning to think it was an act all along. She started helping out at school because I do. She's enrolled her children in the same sports club as the one my children attend. She's going to the same hairdresser, and yes, she now has a very similar hairdo to mine. Now she's bought a house in the same street, but what's really got me running scared is that she started asking personal questions about my husband and calling him when I'm not at home. Could this possibly be construed as normal behaviour? Because I'm thinking that my next move is to pay to have surveillance cameras set up in my home. George, does proof from Chatswood have to go that far? Yes, I think she should do that. I think that, Prue, you should install those cameras, then you should remove any of the fences that join your houses, then invite this person into a, you know, a relationship with you and your husband and make a reality TV show about it. It's the flavour of the month, of the time. So you think she should make a little bit of money, get, get her 15 minutes of fame mm, off this. I think so. And I mean, this woman's obviously going to do whatever Prue suggests. She's quite clearly obsessed with her. It could be like a secret camera show yeah. where somebody goes, right, um, they identify a target. We're going to stalk this person. Right, we're going to get yeah. you to get into their life and stalk them, film them oh. secretly, yep. uh -huh. and then, you know, when they're like they're there with the, the stiletto ready to bang it through her yeah. chest, everyone jumps out and goes, surprise! <laughs> yes, yes. That would be good. Yes. It's a win-win situation. It's a win-win situation. Really. John, uh, reality TV, is that really how to make the best of this? I would think, what I would like to see you do, Prue, is to embrace that shit. Because it would be awesome if I was driving around in chats with New South Wales and I saw two families exactly the same. Just add a little bit of, bit of magic to the world. You know what I'm saying? You know, you're out there, you're going to get the same sausage rolls, you go to, just follow each other around. It'd be really weird. Don't have to do it on the show. Just do it. And people go, man, have you seen that double family? It's not the same. That's, that's wicked. So to be like the big banana or um, the big sheep or whatever oh, would yeah, be an like attraction. A tourist attraction. Tourist attraction. Uh, well, I don't really want... I, I, I prefer things that are a bit more underground because I'm so cool. Yeah, groovy. Um, I mean... Don't sorry, say not, groovy not again. Groovy, yeah. uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just get out there and it just happens and people know it. It becomes a little of a myth. And then when you die, right, which will happen soon... Mm -hmm. Soon. <laughs> Probably, no judge of mine this letter. <laughs> you'll become a myth around Chatswood of this yeah. old family, yeah. this double family. The Prue right. too. The Prue too. Who shared yeah. the same husband, and I think that's part yeah. of what's tipped it over the edge for her, Russell, oh, is uh, yeah. that she's cold call calling yeah. the husband, asking yeah. questions. Oh, it's, it's a fantastic story. Mm. It's like, is there, a, is there a, is it Wisteria Lane? You know, in, in Chatswood. Yeah. Yes. Oh, this to me screams of that television show. In fact, Prue. I think you've stolen this idea. 
I don't think you ne necessarily exist. But come on. I, ideally, I'm living think, this scenario out. Should yeah, no, no. Bruce I, I, just got serious nightmare. mental issues. <laughs> and this is whole made up in a thing. No, I, what would be the best possible outcome, Prue, would be if your husband happened to be a one half of an identical twin. I mean, then, then that, that, your scenario, John, would just play out beautifully, and, and but it obviously would make life very easy. Easy. I, I think... Yes. I know the producers of Desperate Housewives love to watch this show. Yeah. I think they could be giving yeah. you a call. Yeah. I mean, the woman sounds freaky, though, to yeah. me, a little bit. Yeah. You but know. is she... Uh, I, when you come out with my hairstyle, I don't like that. Yeah. Glenn, I no. Like, you know I don't like that. No, no. I mean, you know, if I, if I turn up to, you know, while you're getting a, a, a Coke or something like that, yeah. and I buy a Coke at the same time, yeah. it's awkward. No. Yeah. It's awkward. And, and you don't pay for it. No, I get you to pay for it. That's, yeah. I pay that's for, yeah. awkward. Yeah. Claire? Well, Come on, bring us home, Claire. You've got to... I'll bring it home. We need some words of wisdom. Home, These three have helped us out. No, nothing. She is basically... Prue, your friend, is suffering from low self-esteem. You need to help her. Okay. You need to find something about her and then copy that. Oh, brilliant. Oh, you're saying reverse copy. Reverse it? Because yeah. I remember when I was a kid... And, uh, and you used to, when you were, you know, like with a sibling and you'd say, I, stop that. And they'd go, stop that. Yeah. Oh. How did you break that cycle? You'd go, well, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Yay. Oh, Got me. That's yeah. Good. That's, so, that's what you need to do, Prue. Copy what, something so, about your friend. What's something she could copy? Uh, nail polish colour, uh, outfit, something great. like that. Great, great. Takeaway that she uses, something like that. Copy it. Freak her out. Fantastic. Mm. Well, there you go, Prue. You've heard it first from the panel, and uh, well, look, there have been three fantastic letters tonight. Oh, Remarkable okay. letters, I've got to say. Uh, I, I think very good. They've been encapsulating universal yeah. Yeah. I like these letters. I think. Gary's I really know. looked after yeah. me tonight, yeah. my, my first time in the, the host's chair. Uh, but yeah. which we one? all know these three people, don't we? Yeah. That's the thing. It's yeah, so, yeah. Um, be yeah. it from television or real life. Probably my yeah. street, your street. Yeah. Or the yeah. panel, in fact. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or the panel. Sorry. Yeah. Claire slash Kelly. Oh. That's right. Oh, oh, well, right. right. Uh, who do you think Russell deserves the sunglasses tonight? I'm, look, I think I'm going to go with Kelly. But that's, I mean, really yep. exotic dancing, I think. Yeah, yep. Such a winner. Claire? I'd go Kelly. Kelly. I feel sorry for Kelly. Yeah, mm. yeah. And she needs the sunglasses to what? Uh, hide her shame. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the shame for being an exotic dancer. Uh, so you'd like to see her wearing the sunglasses? Uh, no, I would like to give the sunglasses to Prue. Oh, would oh, you? Yes, I would. Oh, what? Just because you that know. wouldn't be a pair that her stalker would have. Exactly. No. exactly. Have Unless her stalker sent a letter into Sweet and Sour, which, judging by her stalker, she would. Quick, yeah. George, you know. who do they go to? Um, look, I'm going to have to go with Kelly. Okay. I, think, I think she's answered. Kelly gets the sunglasses yeah. from Aussie Optical, aussieoptical.com.au. Oh, what a big night. Thank you so much for coming in, Russ. Thanks, pleasure. mate. It's a pleasure. Glenn, I've had a really good time. It's been wonderful to be able to help people, I think. Claire, yeah, I need, I need all the help I can get. Thanks for helping me. George, thank you for coming along. John? Thanks, Glenn. <laughs> all the best. Well, it's been great sitting in Gary's chair. You'll have Gary next time. Bye.